What's going on, everyone? So the other day, we got the report that the Lakers are currently focused on internal improvements. Um, so, per Sports Illustrated, I'm told the Lakers at present are focused on internal improvements, hopeful that getting Jared Vanderbilt and Vincent back on the floor uh, regularly will give them meaningful boost. So, this was in response to the Zach Levine trade, for those that are wondering. Um the Lakers, we got a report on that, yes, they are interested in Zach Levine, but right now they're not focused on a Zach Levine trade. They are focused on internal improvements, right? We've been dealing with injuries since the beginning of the season. Uh, we've been kind of just going through the motions here, trying to develop chemistry, trying to figure out uh, what is this team's identity. And it's hard when you're missing several of your key pieces, especially all of your defensive pieces. Cam Reddish is out now. So it's really frustrating that it's just like we keep getting guys back and then another guy goes out and it's just like, can we just have a nice like stretch to see what does this team truly look like? Now, obviously the Lakers are having struggles beyond just like health, right? The energy is a big issue, rebounding, stuff like that. But once you do have this team together and they're in the flow, and especially your top defensive guys, right? You're going to be better defensively on top of being better defensively. That very likely picks up and, and makes your offense better, you know, because good defense usually leads to good offense uh, through just transition plays, as well as, you know, creating turnovers and just the energy on the defensive side when that picks up, that just gets guys going, right? starts hitting shots, uh, it becomes contagious. The energy that Jared Vanderbilt can provide, uh, uh, Gabe Vincent, Cam Reddish, right? all of these things are very important and huge factors. Now, I do fully believe that the Lakers will be immersed in a trade for Zach Levine or DeMar DeRozan. Uh, if someone else becomes available at some point, uh, obviously the Lakers are always going to be linked to some of the top trade targets. It's the Lakers. The Lakers also could use that consistent go-to score. Uh, a Zach Levine, a DeMar DeRozan would greatly help. Um, I So this doesn't mean that they're not going to try to make a push at some point, but even right now, the Lakers couldn't trade for either of these guys, even if they wanted to, right? I mean, the, the Chicago Bulls right now could essentially give both of these guys to us for free and say, you know, we don't want picks, we don't want anything, just match the salaries and we'll take it. It doesn't matter. Lakers literally cannot make a trade for either of these guys till, you know, basically mid-January. January 15th is when everyone should be available. A couple guys become available in December, like D'Lo and stuff. So, But nothing's going to happen in the trade front, and Chicago's not going to be trading these guys till around the trade deadline anyway. So between now and the trade deadline, we have uh, quite a bit of time uh, before we, we see a, a Zach Levine or DeMar DeRozan in a purple and gold jersey, if that even comes to it. But in the meantime, I mean, you know, I, I do think that they need to focus on just internal improvements. Um, Obviously, again, I, I do think that they could use a solid trade. Look, I still fully believe this team, as currently constructed, is capable of winning an NBA championship. They haven't shown it yet for an entirety of a game. Right now, this team is nowhere near a championship contending team. They're just not. But we have seen glimpses. We have seen quarters. We have seen uh, sample sizes where okay, this team looks like they could be the best team in the league if they can put it all together. And that's the thing. The Lakers have to put it all together, right? We have seen these fourth quarters. Lakers are one of the best teams, one of the best fourth quarter teams in the entire league. They might, after the Dallas game, might even be number one at this point. Um, but regardless, they are up there as far as one of the top teams. But they haven't been able to put it together for an entire game outside of like, you know, the, the like Memphis game and that Jazz game. But even that was just... Those are two really bad teams, right? Like, let's see them actually display that championship pedigree, that championship level play against some of these better teams. Something we need to see. Also, you need to find out, again, what is this team's identity, right? Like, I have yet to really see and figure out what this team's identity truly is. And then also, like, what are who are our key guys and rotation guys that we, we want to keep and we need 
come playoff time, right? Because pretty much everybody not named LeBron James has been very inconsistent. Anthony Davis was looking like, oh, this is it. Like, he's turning the corner. He's coming back to to, to being 2020 AD. And the last, like, handful of games, he's just been back to Mr. Inconsistent. And it's frustrating, right? He needs to be back to consistent. Now, you're not trading Anthony Davis. You're not getting rid of Anthony Davis. You're not doing any of that stuff. But we need Anthony Davis to continue to, to show that he can be that guy. Right, rather than one game he is that guy, the next game he's not. Right, but outside of those two, I mean, look, Austin Reeves has had moments where he's been completely unplayable for like games and stretches, and then some games he looks like old Austin Reeves, ready to to take over the league by storm once again. D'Lo, same thing. D'Lo has had games where he is absolutely brilliant and just playing like the guy we need him to play, and then all of a sudden he just looks like he, he doesn't even belong out there on the court, right? I mean, we have yet to see these guys consistently put it together. I will say Rui, Rui's another guy that I think has has shown a level of consistency. It's just been his lack of playing time at times, right? But that also doesn't help when LeBron James is playing 36 to 40 minutes a game, right? The whole idea was that Rui is LeBron's replacement when he goes to the bench and stuff like that. He's the first sub for LeBron, and but he, he can't really play many other positions. So when LeBron has to play 36 to 40 minutes, that, that leaves just very minimal minutes for Rui Hachimura. But I do think Rui has been very good, very consistent this year. So I'll leave him out of that conversation. But, like, where's Torian Prince been? Right? He had two out of the first three games. He was great. And then since then, he has been atrocious for the most part. Right? Christian Wood has had some nice games. He's had some great defensive sequences. Right? That one Phoenix Suns game, he was excellent defensively. But for the most part has been kind of lackluster. Again, he's had moments, he's had games here and there, but he hasn't been the guy that we hoped that he would be. You know, you have the injuries, you have all those things. So until we see, like, okay, well, we got, like, if Christian Wood starts coming into his own and really starts to kind of show that he's the the Christian Wood that we expected him to be, a guy that can go give you 15 to 17, night in and night out, play defense, uh, you know, rebound the basketball, do the things that we need him to do, right? If that happens, then it's like, okay, well, maybe we can comfortably trade Rui Hachimura. I'm not saying we should. I'm not saying that I don't want him or anything like that, but you're going to have to, if you're going to get a guy like a Zach Levine or a DeMar DeRozan or something, you're going to have to trade some guys that you might not want to trade, right? It's just how it's going to work. So, you know, if Christian Wood, like right now, if we traded Rui Hachimura, I would have my concerns because Christian Wood just has not been the guy we need him to be. Now, if he can get back to that and show that consistency, he's coming off of uh, not well, not the Dallas game, but the game before that, the Utah game, coming off of a good game there, right? If he can be consistent, I'm not saying he has to be a 17 point a game guy, but if he can night in and night out give a level, some level of consistency, if he can give us eight to 10 points a game and grab, you know, six to eight rebounds a game and play some decent defense and stuff, it's like, okay, well, okay, we can get away with giving up Rui Hachimura to go get a, a Levine or a DeMar DeRozan because we could use that consistency and that go-to scoring, right? D'Lo and Reeves, like, which guy is the, the better fit currently? Which guy is the guy that we need to keep? Which guy is the guy that maybe we should trade? Because, again, you're going to have to trade one of them. Now, D'Lo, I think, is the most likely, and I do think that D'Lo, you can make an argument too, makes most, most sense, but D'Lo, he's had games where he looks like, dude, there's no way you can trade this guy. This guy will go and give you 20 points and dish out nine assists, right? Hit big shots, shoot the ball well, make plays for others. He's also one of the few guys actively trying to get Anthony Davis the basketball. And it's like Austin Reeves, he, when he's played that point guard role, he's not looked very good at all. He doesn't look comfortable. He, he's not actually uh, running any real offense. And he's not getting guys in a position. He's not. He's just kind of out there over dribbling at times. His vision isn't great. Like he's really struggled at, to make plays when he's been the the basic on ball primary guy. Right. 
he, he's looked to get his shots. He's been one of our closers down the stretch and all that stuff. But, like, there's a real argument. If you go get a Levine or you go get a DeMar DeRozan, then you don't really need Austin Reeves closing down the stretch because you got DeMar DeRozan, who's been one of the most clutch guys and one of the best closers in the league the last few years, right? Or you go get a Zach Levine. It's like you got that guy to do that. Maybe it would be better to keep D'Lo as the playmaker as the guy that could play off the ball, but also set guys up like a Zach Levine, like a LeBron James, like an Anthony Davis, right? Or like a DeMar DeRozan, whomever, right? Again, I'm not saying that you have that you should trade Reeves. I'm not saying anything, but I'm saying like the Lakers need to figure out and navigate this and come to the conclusion, okay, these are the guys we have to keep, right? Obviously, you know, you're Jared Vanderbilt, you're Cam Reddish, you got LeBron James and Anthony Davis, right? But are you maybe like if Torian Prince continues to struggle, He's making $5 million. Maybe you could throw him and add in his salary to go get some extra pieces, right? Maybe you can get a Levine and a Caruso or a Levine and an Andre Drummond, right? Like, that's what the Lakers need to figure out here. Like, what pieces make the most sense? What pieces are working well together? What guys are we going to need to complement other guys? And, and as we move closer to, like, the trade deadline, what players become available that maybe make more sense or might be a better fit or maybe a better long-term play, right? Or more impactful. Even if these guys, let's say these guys figure it out. Let's say, you know, against the Cleveland Cavaliers, we win that game and we win the next 15, we go 15 and 0 in the next 15 games, right? You still, if you have the opportunity to be better, you become better right? It's just what you do. You don't stand pat if the right deal is there. You don't make a trade just to make a trade. You don't just unload guys just to unload guys. But if you can find the right move, you can find the right deal, and you can kind of upgrade certain players in spots, then you do that because you're not only going to be better this season, but you're going to be better in the long run, right? So if the Lakers can do that, that would be great. But in general, like, we need to see guys just be more consistent. I do agree 100% with the internal improvements. That is a huge thing right now. We need to figure out who we are. Who is Austin Reeves? Who is D'Angelo Russell? These were two guys that we expected to come in and basically pick up where they left off last season and be really good, consistent, keyword consistent, just players for us that took a lot of pressure and a lot of the burden off of LeBron James, off of Anthony Davis. And thus far, they haven't, right? Again, they've had games. They've had moments. They've had sequences where they've been excellent, right? But what about game in and game out? You know, like D'Lo will have a three or four game stretch where he's unbelievable. And then he'll have a three or four game stretch where it's just like, come on, dude, like, where are you? You know, same thing with Austin Reeves. Like, and Austin Reeves has been atrocious defensively. Like, D'Lo isn't a great defender by any means, but D'Lo's been a better defender than Austin Reeves, for one, and has been getting after it much better, right? He's been a great help defender. He's been getting deflections. He's been very good. D'Lo's been very good defensively for his standards, right? Again, not Jared Vanderbilt here, but he's been, like, right now, I would trust D'Lo much more than Austin Reeves as far as the defensive side of the basketball and even just playmaking and making plays, right? Like, if you trade D'Lo, then LeBron's your only real playmaker, right? Like, Gabe Vincent is not a great playmaker. He can find the open man, but he's more of a, a 3 and D off the ball, you know, Patrick Beverly, uh, Dennis Schroeder type mold type player. Like, they can make plays in spots. They can hit and find the open guy, but they're not out here wheeling and dealing. Like, D'Lo has been excellent at just finding guys. Like, that game that LeBron didn't play, I mean, D'Lo put on an absolute clinic. Clinic. The dude was out there just just butchering the defense. And Austin Reeves, again, he's been he's had these moments where he's been the primary guy ball handler and he's turning the ball over and making bad passes and making lazy passes and just doesn't look like he handles pressure well and a defensive pressure well and you know he's he's not making the right reads and he's not just he's looking more for his shot or he's over dribbling and stuff it's like we need to figure all this stuff out right 
Rui Hachimura, is is he really kind of taking those next steps? We need to see that. We need to find that out. But it's hard to do that, again, when LeBron has to play 40 minutes a game. It's hard to kind of get Rui a bunch of playing time because you, you can't put Rui at the two, can't put Rui at the center. I mean, in a sm- in certain small ball lineup, sure, but like you don't want him playing that heavily. You can't really put him at the three because he can't defend the, the longer, quicker, twitchier, uh, just perimeter wings, right? Or these, these guard forward type guys. He just doesn't have the foot speed and the lateral movement to do that, right? So Rob Palinka. He's he, he's going to take this time between now and you know mid January to the trade deadline to to really see like okay what is this team's makeup what does this team actually need how does this team look you know are are what's available you know what is our identity looking like are there any guys that we just cannot trade for whatever reason right like the Lakers are going to be in in the the Lakers are in observant mode right now trying to figure and navigate things out but. Look, I fully trust Rob Palinka. He has shown that, like you know, that he can find good deals, he can find good opportunities, and if that is on the table, if he can find that right deal, he can find that opportunity, then he's going to make the move and, and put the Lakers in a good position. And I, I fully expect that to happen. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on to you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Um, do you agree? Do you think like yes, this is the best course of action? Do you think no? Like, you know, like as soon as you're able to make a trade, go make a trade. Um, how do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's make you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate you all. See you in the next one. Thank you.